Hello, everyone out there, and welcome back to another episode of Dirt to Dust, presented by Outlaw Offroad. Uh, you may have noticed that we missed an episode. Um, that is on me. We cannot blame Caleb for that one. We are currently, uh, we at the shop are currently prepping a Jeep to go to Mob Moab, which is Rock Crawler's version and a couple other companies, Outlaw Offroad included, version of kind of doing our own thing for EJS, I guess is what we'll say. Um, only because the last the last several years of weather at EJS was bad. I think last year we got snowed on every couple of days. And I, I remember sitting up on Metal Masher last year in 2023. And Jeremy Pierrick from Rock Crawler was like, we're not doing this again. We're, too, we're bringing back Mob Moab. It's something that kind of got going during COVID when they shut down EJS. And it was a very, very small group of like 10 to 15 rigs. And we all went out there with our families. It was real low key. Um, but like he said, you know, when you're out at EJS from a marketing standpoint, it's very difficult to stand out because everybody's posting, everybody's doing pictures. It's kind of like that FOMO thing going on. And, you know, when we're out there for mob, you know, mob Moab, it's, um, or at least this year's Moab, um, it's just us, you know, it's, it's just us. So this year he decided to make it a thing, opened it up to the public. Now I think there's going to be like a hundred some rigs out there. It's going to be crazy. But, uh, that was kind of the reason the original impetus behind buying the four by E was maybe I can have this thing ready for mob Moab and I don't have to like, I could take the race car, but I don't really want to. I took the race car to EJS last year, but I really wanted to take something different with, you know, air conditioning and speakers, <laughs> especially this time of <laughs> and year, real seats. Um, oh God. Moab yes. warms up pretty quickly. Uh, it, it, does. it goes from it snow does. To, to desert very fast. So yeah, AC I'm pretty is, happy is though. Nice. I think the weather is supposed to be like low fifties. Now, of course this is down in Moab, right? This mm -hmm. is at like 25, 2600 feet. Um, like low, low to mid fifties every morning. Uh, and like, upper 70s to low 80s every day so low nice. even some of the mid 80s which you get up at elevation man that's gonna be that's gonna feel great that's gonna be amazing mm -hmm. oh it's gonna be so good i've wheeled moab at sub freezing in the snow and i've wheeled moab at north of 100 in july i i prefer the middle <laughs> so i think we're gonna we're, our plan is to get the you know the jeep out there take the top off now as we sit here um it's it's still not done i know in the last episode we were still working on it we've had some graphic snafus um trying to get that color it's that four by e color and i needed some graphics it is it's tough and i ended up reaching out to don at pixel decals great company um and he said yeah use this vinyl if you're going to print it do it this way and he's like yeah just if you're going to do the vinyl so we ended up going the actual vinyl route uh I had some of that overnighted we got some of that in the day they're actually the, the jeep itself is built i mean right down to the trail table and the alignment the retort the beadlock all that's done our part, the outlaw offered part of it's done. So they're over at the shop right now printing graphics. There's some more being overnighted as we speak. They're going to finish up the graphics tomorrow. We'll give it a final kind of wipe down, check over, clean over. Um, I've already loaded a um, little nod to our safety episode. I've already nodded my, I've already loaded my med kit. That's in there. I've already loaded my air source. I've already loaded my, and there is a life straw. Actually, I think there's three life straws uh, in my med kit. We've already mounted the uh, Max Out H3R Performance fire extinguisher. All that stuff's loaded. The cooler's loaded. We just got to fill it with some frosty beverages that aren't alcoholic for trail days. Um, tool bags going in tomorrow. Uh, yeah, so she's she's getting there. She's pretty well. Yeah, I think she ships out. She's shipping out. She should be there in Denver. And then I've got somebody driving it to Grand Junction for me. I fly into Grand Junction next Wednesday. So the Jeep will be there waiting for me. We'll, we'll pop down to Moab. Luckily, it's a short little drive, and that's why that is. But because of that whole graphic snafu and parts being overnight and all that, I was not available uh, to film an episode this week. It just did not – it just was not a thing. It couldn't be a thing. So figured we would do a little hybrid episode this week. Um, I know, Caleb, you said you had some pretty good questions. Um, so I figured we'd – you know, we definitely uh, – we will probably – also not have an episode next Wednesday only because next Wednesday I will be on a plane. Um, and in the days leading up to that, um, we've got to, you know, pack up vehicles. We've got to pack stuff. We've got to, you know, there's, there's just a lot of stuff that I've got to do. I think I'm leading a couple of the rides now. So I've got to get all my map stuff set up and all that good stuff. Um, comms, all that good stuff, the stuff that doesn't go with the Jeep. So there will probably not be an episode next Wednesday. There will, however, be, um, there will be an episode on Wednesday. The what day is that? Wednesday, the first, it's like the, the 29th, Wednesday, the 29th, Wednesday, yeah. May 29th is the day. 
Uh, I'll be back that day, but I think you, Caleb, are going to have a, a guest host yet to be announced. Yeah, yet to be announced. Um, I am securing that guest host today, uh, figuring out what nice. we're going to talk about next week and give them plenty of time to uh, prepare for that. Um, nice. I know a lot of people watched the episode with Ryan McCutcheon. Uh, I think that would be really cool. Um, there's been ride. there's some other outlaw people going to Mob Moab, so I don't know if I can grab yep. all the outlaw, <laughs> outlaw people. Uh, but n- nonetheless, it'll be it'll be a good episode. I think I've got some pretty good uh, content scheduled out. Um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Good. Yeah, we've got. I think we've got several outlaw shops going to Moab. We've got another couple that are staying behind because they're preparing to go down to Florida Jeep Jam, I believe, which is. Like they leave as we come back, they're leaving. Mm-hmm. Um, so having Jeeps out west wasn't going to work for that. So we left some stuff, some people, some people and stuff back here. There is um, one of the stores has a big ride on Memorial Day weekend. So and we got all kinds of stuff going. It's getting that time of year. It is the season. That time of year. Oh yeah, it, it is the season. It's that really ratcheting up of the wheeling and event season. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. I haven't wheeled this Jeep yet. I can't wait. Um, hopefully, I don't break it. Uh, I think the Jeep's good. It's got good, good stuff on it. Good quality parts. So hopefully, hopefully I don't, um, hopefully the Jeep is not too much better than me, but it probably is. So, so with that, we're going to get this episode going. Uh, I've made my excuses. I've made enough excuses. So let's jump in to the Friday mailbag. When other people see dirt, you see glory. And when you see a vehicle for the first time, your first thought is not how pretty it is, but how much abuse can it take? This is Dirt to Dust, presented by Outlaw Off-Road. If it's anything off-road and dirty, we probably like it, and we're probably talking about it. You'll get industry info, tech talk, and interviews with the biggest and best in the industry. Let's do it. This is Dirt to Dust. And now your hosts, Doug Langford and Caleb Forbes. All right, so as we said, it is a Friday mailbag. Uh, I am done with my excuses. Caleb has informed me he has some pretty good questions today that I have not answered before. Uh, at least on this podcast. So without further ado, Senor Forbes, hit me with the mailbag questions. Hey, yo. All right. Um, yeah, I don't think we've uh, answered these before. These are pretty good. I did scour the interwebs in a couple Jeep groups and uh, kind of found some good uh, good content like usual. Uh, the first one's from a local club to me, Charlotte Jeep Club. It's actually growing pretty fast, um, but okay. with very fast growing groups are... Um, are inexperienced people, which nothing against them. You got to learn somewhere. Uh, So uh, this person asked, I have a two and a half inch, two and a half inch lift in 35s. I'm getting a bad steering shimmy, but not full on death wobble. The dealership says the steering stabilizer is the issue. They've offered to replace it with a bigger than factory in quotes, stabilizer to fix it. But does this sound right? Um, So I've had some personal experience with this. On, on a couple of fronts lately did i'm assuming this is a um this is a jl or does it say uh yeah it looks to be a jl okay so and, and actually we had one at the shop in greensboro for a while that we had we're trying to check down death wobble and we had replaced a bunch of stuff and the customer was very very certain that it was nothing that it had to be something that we did and so we went over it you know, he just would not pay any diagnostic time. It was, we were limited to only going over this stuff. We put this thing in the air. We checked ball joints. We checked track bar joints. Like we had, we built, this Jeep was built, um, you know, to what he would let us. Um, and it kept getting death wobble. So they called, one of the techs called me up and said, look, what else can it be? I said, look, you just need to, I, I really want this customer happy. <laughs> like I get, he doesn't want to pay us for diag time, but I guarantee he's going to be happy if we figure it out. So I said, this guy's he's been a customer for a long, long time. He's spent a lot of money um, on a lot of things. And I said, look, let's just, in the interest of customer service, let's, let's, let's do a couple of things so that then we can go back to him and say, look, just, you know, in the interest of keeping this relationship, we did A, B, and C. This is where we want to continue, you know, D, E, and F and down the line. And I said, just, just start at the beginning. Act like we didn't build it. Act like we didn't change the, you know, it was all stuff at his request. Um, but, you know, he'd bring it in and say, hey, but we didn't know about the problem. He'd say, "Oh, replace. I need this. I need ball joints replaced." 
well, why do you need, why do you think you need ball just replaced? Oh, I just want him replaced. It's time. And it was time, but it wasn't any specific issue. We'll come to find out. Um, he was getting some intermittent death wobble and it came back. So I said, just start from the beginning and come to find out. Um, it was the, uh, and this is a JK. It was the steering stabilizer. Took the steering stabilizer off and went and drove it. Death wobble went away. Now this is on a JK. Hmm. I know. I know. This is definitely things <laughs> usually, that make you go, hmm. Usually hmm. doesn't now, work like that. <laughs> it usually does not work like that. There has to be some type of failure in that, not just where, not just because it's old, not just because stabilizers cause death wobble. Stabilizers generally, they're never going to fix death wobble unless they cause it, right? It's very, very, very rare in a JK. I can count on one hand the number of JKs I've ever seen changing a stabilizer fixes it it is a very specific type of failure um so we did find out that that was the issue i was hesitant to believe it until we actually removed the the removed it and went and drove it under several different conditions um different you know hitting bumps hitting potholes different hitting speed bumps different speeds you know anywhere from 10 to 50 i mean all of that to finally be able to say okay yeah it, it absolutely was um the steering stabilizer so he was super happy um, ended up picking out some high dollar Fox that he wanted. He wanted it to match his shocks or whatever. Uh, and that's been ordered. And I think he's leaving it at the shop until it's fixed. So that was one in the JK. Um, personally in the JL, um, when we, when we first, when we first built it, um, I, I got it to where I didn't, we, we built it without a steering stabilizer because it was back ordered originally. And because it was a four by E, I decided I wanted to do King shocks just because of the color and King's a good shock. So why not? Um, and they, they're a linear valve shock. So it paired well with the rock crawler coil. So I knew it would work. And King tends to be the non-adjustable ones tend to be on the firm side. Um, which is what I like. I kind of like that. I like a firmer ride, i.e. the race car. Um, that tends to be higher compression, higher rebound tends to be better at speed. And I'm here for off-road speeding tickets, you know, whatever. So when we first built it, got it out. And I noticed a little bit of, I noticed a little bit of a wiggle and we thought, that we, you know, we figured it out that we just needed more. We just had to make some alignment adjustments because it was a fresh build. This thing's a brand new, this thing's a brand new Jeep, fresh build. Um, but I did notice when we finally did get the stabilizer and we got it pretty good. It actually made the steering better. Like it did. Like I'd hit a hole and it would just do this. Not a wobble. It was not death wobble. Let me be clear. It was not, it was not death wobble. It is not even what I would call death wiggle, but there was some deflection um, in the steering and the steering had been replaced. Um, rock crawler, RPM, two inch aluminum. Like this was good stuff that it was being replaced with. Um, and you'd hit a bump the right way. Just again, that passenger front tire. And it would just go to do, just put the stabilizer on there. It went away. All that being said, um, there is, there was a large problem on a couple of batches of steering stabilizers on JLs that absolutely did cause death wobble, like full on death wobble. Um, it, it, it was crazy. Nobody wanted to believe it. I didn't believe it at first. Uh, it was actually Scott at Jeep who told me, he's like, yeah, this, this is, it's a thing. And then within two weeks, there was a TSB out. Then it was getting, then the information was kind of getting out wide to the industry that it was in fact, there was in fact a steering stabilizer problem on the JL. It wasn't like, it's not in the, like the 23, 24s it's fixed now, but there was a batch, you know, late teens, early twenties where there were some bad steering stabilizers and, some internal failures, um, and they were causing they were causing problems. Um, so at one time they couldn't get them, and dealerships were actually paying. We had we had a dealership pay us to put a Fox, you know, more than once to put like a Fox stabilizer or a, a, uh, a couple of them paid for. We you know, our replacement for those was just the Steer Smarts HDN. It was comparably priced to the Mopar one. I think at the time they were like eighty five bucks. Um, so they were comparably priced. They looked about the same. They had the same aesthetic. Like if I didn't put the sticker on it that said steer smart, you probably could have mistaken it for Mopar. It was just black. Um, it wasn't anything special about it, except it was HD dash in, which said for neutral, it was neutral pressure left and right, which is factory style, um, which you don't get a lot of, which is kind of why people think they need dual steering stabilizers because they oppose each other. Cause one pushes one pulls. Um, that's a whole nother topic for another episode, but unless you go to full pass through the chambers generally aren't even except in, you know, ones that are generic, that are actually specifically made to be pressure neutral and the steer smarts were. So yeah, we got paid by the dealership here in town that we're friendly with multiple times to replace customers. And then a couple of them, 
we would give them an invoice and the dealership was reimbursing them or Jeep was reimbursing them for some stabilizers. Now, if you have that problem, they just, they just put one of the newer version stabilizers on there. It's directional. It actually has a little sticker on there that says this way towards, you know, whatever. Um, and it's, and it's not a problem, but, um, that's a long way of saying as much as I hate to admit it. Yeah. On a JL specifically, <laughs> yeah, a steering right. stabilizer can cause death wobble. So if they're willing yeah. to do that, especially if they're going to put a bigger one on there, I you, you don't need a bigger one. Like I would ask, make sure it's a decent stabilizer, right? Like, yeah. are you just putting a bigger Mopar one on I, there? Like, you I assume you don't need that. What they mean by bigger than factory is actually just putting like a Fox generic stabilizer on there. It's um, possible. Or, or something. But they have the parts for it yeah. now. They have. Yeah. So I would think, I don't know, find out what they're doing, but bigger, generally maybe speaking, interplace with better. I don't know, but I mean, yeah, yeah, that's, um, that's super interesting. I, I've never heard of that. I know we've, we've talked about not adding steering stabilizers to cure death wobble, but I've never heard of yep. steering stabilizers being the cause. So that's super interesting. I mean, uh, that's the old school thinking for decades. Yeah, it's been and, that way. Well, and people now, yell at each other, steering, steering stabilizers don't <laughs> fix death wobble. Actually. <laughs> One second. Kind of yes, no. <laughs> there are some circumstances. And, and you know, I was one of the, I'd be one of the first to go look, like, especially in non JL, JK, 2018 JK and back, it is exceedingly rare. Um, again, I have seen thousands of JKs and I can count on one hand the number of times that a steering stabilizer has been the culprit. So it is a fraction of a percentage that a stabilizer is going to fix your death wobble. Unless we're talking JL, then it's then it's actually a fairly decent percentage, and you might want to look at upgrading. And a lot of people do upgrade. Like you, I, I know you said he has got a lift. You know, so people generally will look at, oh, I got a lift with Bilstein shocks. I'm gonna put a Bilstein stable in there, like I did with the four by. I had um, King shocks, so I grabbed the King stabilizer on my Gladiator. I had the Fox 30 factory shock, so I got the Fox Fox factory uh, pass through. I didn't need that much stabilizer, but it matched. So I totally get the matching aesthetics of that. Um, so, you know, look at getting one that matches if you want that aesthetic, but you don't need that. You certainly don't need it, but it's more of a want at that point. But what a, what is it on these off-road vehicles that we do that's a need? None of it. So, yeah, do what you want. You could even – some of these dealers will even give you, um, like, a credit towards buying one sometimes. So, I mean, it, it's worth asking the question if they're going to do it anyway at their cost. You know, hey, might as well hit them up for something better bigger, badder, faster, whatever, uh, especially if it can match the aesthetic. So, you know, might be worth having the conversation. Yeah, for sure. Well, armed with that knowledge, I will, um, I will put my comment in cause I held my comment off <laughs> until, until we had this uh -huh. discussion. You uh, didn't expect that answer from <laughs> me either. I know you didn't. I did not. I expect you to have a 10 minute rant about why uh -huh. stabilizers are dumb. <laughs> yeah. All right. I move. mean, let me let, well, let me, let me clarify. Yes, if you if you build your vehicle right, you do not need a steering stabilizer. However, what we are talking about is vehicles. I do understand wanting the steering stabilizer. It does firm up. You know, there is a definite difference in feel on a solid axle vehicle and steering. There isn't like an IFS. Um, so I get that people want to like. It's totally different when I hop in my twenty five hundred Chevy pickup truck. That steering is totally different when I hop in my wife's Ford Expedition. When I hop on, you know, anything, it's totally different. So I get wanting to have the steering stabilizer to firm that up and get rid of some of that vibration. Totally understand that. If if your vehicle is built right and you don't have a stabilizer, then that's 100% right. Steering stabilizers don't make a difference. They're not going to they're not going to cause death wobble because you don't need it. But if you're going to run it for whatever reason, there is a slight chance um, that it could could cause that. And to add it into the diagnostic tree really doesn't take that much. It's usually two bolts. We take it off and we go drive it like it doesn't add that much to being able to verify that that's not it because the vast, vast majority of the time, that's not going to be an issue. But in certain vehicles, you know, yeah, it could be. It could be. So, well, sorry to disappoint. Props to you for uh, double checking and uh, keeping your ego checked. That's I mean, it, sometimes yeah. it's hard to eat your own words. and You're like, oh, it's never, it, it, it's it, not it, going to be the steering hurt. stabilizer. But then you realize it is. And you're like, hey, all right. When that first I happened, it hurt. That, that, in my soul, that hurt. <laughs> that's OK. That's all right. Uh, all right, moving right along. Uh, the next one is from the Wrangler Jail Group. Um, she said, I'm looking to have to reinforce my tailgate so my 35s stop rattling. Uh, looking at going to a 37 to 38 in the future and only want to buy parts one time. What do you suggest? So, well, the buy once, cry once thing comes in here because before you said 
Um, is this, and this is a JL, another, this was a JL group, right? So again, I've done this recently too. And you know, I'm a big, I'm a big delete the spare guy. Um, but on the four by E build, I did not delete the spare. I went with an actual tire carrier. So there's three ways on a JL that you can do a tire carrier. Number one is you can do stock and you can do spacers. You know, the, they say the tailgate and the, um, the hinges are supposed to be, and they are, they're stronger on the JL than they were on the JK. It's some kind of magnesium, uh, thing on the, on the spare holder and the tailgate's different. It's all different materials it's supposed to be way stronger. And it is, I think they say 115 pounds is the safe limit. Um, I've put more on there in testing and it's done fine, but then sometimes certain setups or whatever, you will start getting a little bit of noise. So, um, if I could talk about spacers for a 35, which you don't need, but you could do it to get rid of rattling. We could also talk about a, a different tire, a, an OE replacement, which Terraflex makes the alpha. Uh, and they make two versions of that. They make one without the tailgate hinge reinforcement. And they make one with, um, and they're designed to hold, you know, different weights. But if you are saying 37, 38, over a 37 is when we talk about full tire carrier replacement. We're talking Evo. We're talking Moto Built. We're talking Cav Fab. We're talking those type of, of pieces where you are now going to replace the door hinges. You are going to add substructure inside the body, inside the hinges, and you are going to change everything. Um, for me, I went Moto Built. Uh, we have a good relationship with those guys. Good product. I have zero problem with the cab fab, the cab fab setup. Absolutely none. I have zero problem with the Evo setup. I love all three of them. I would be happy with all three of them. For me, it was just an aesthetics thing. I just like the way the motor built hinge things looked. Um, that's it. That is the only reason it was not, there was, it was not a pricing thing. It was not a quality thing. It was not none of that. You would be extremely happy with any of those. Um, again, Evo, Moto Built, Cav Fab. Super strong, super good. They all install basically the same way. They're all steel. They're all going to come bare, so you got the powder coat and whatever. Um, who cares? But they're all, all super strong. So if you're thinking 38 up at all, go ahead and get one of those. Um, I can tell you, I do. I love my Moto Built. I can go out to the 4xE right now and just touch the tire. We shimmed it. You could, the Moto Built comes with shims. And Cody, the tech who built that part of the Jeep, he got it. I mean, he got it dead on, man. It is so silky smooth. You can take one finger on the tire and just bloop. And the tailgate just clicks. It's beautiful. Because the problem with some of these, if you don't install them right, it weighs down that tailgate so much. And you end up having to like pick up the tailgate and do that. Um, but not if you install it right. And especially, I can speak for the Moto Built with the shims. Um, but again, we've done all of them. I think... Um, We've got a we've got a shop rig. Uh, maybe the one I think Josh and Charlotte used to have the Evo one. Um, we used to have the Cab Fab one on one vehicle. So I've used them all. They're all awesome and outstanding. Again, just pick one that you like the aesthetic of. Paint it, powder coat it, whatever, and you will not have to worry about it. And I can tell you, I have zero problems having all of the confidence in the world that this this Jeep loads up um, and heads to Moab here in the next I don't know twenty four hours or so. I have no qualms whatsoever saying that thing's going to be absolutely fine on Pritchett Canyon, on Poison Spider, on wherever I'm going to take it. Um, I have no problem saying I'm absolutely confident that that, that tire carrier will hold up. Yeah, and I agree. Uh, all three of those are great options. Um, all three of those good, are yeah. advertised to hold at least a 40 um, Correct. very securely. Um, I want to say Moto Built and Cap have actually advertised a 42. And I know for a fact right. I've seen a 43 on a cab fab carrier. Um, so, yeah, uh, either one of those three will work absolutely great. Strong um, stuff. Strong really, stuff. really good options there. Um, all three are better than stock. All three will do a phenomenal job. Uh, mm -hmm. And moving right along, this is from your favorite group ever. Uh, and I said that last time thinking your favorite group would be the 4 by E group. But no, we found out your, four, oh, your no. favorite group is... The one and only Jeep Gladiators only. <laughs> oh, God, I love that group. I love it so, so much. After after sifting through about um, oh, I don't know twenty pages of or twenty posts of like spam posts, uh, oh, just spam, just straight <laughs> spam bots. There, spam. I I did find actually a really good uh, question, and uh, this guy said, "I've got a twenty twenty one diesel Gladiator. The tow capacity says it's sixty five hundred on paper." 
Um, what is my actual safe maximum towing capacity? Uh, I'm looking to haul a Grand Cherokee to our new house in the mountains with a U-Haul trailer um, in Colorado. Uh, 6,500. <laughs> 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 I mean, I, I feel like he's trying to get people to tell him that he can do more. That's um, that's kind of what I was thinking, but also that's, I was a, legal, like, that's a legality thing, man. Yeah, like I'm, if, I'm not never going to tell you more. Um, if your tow and I dealt with this this week, so uh, if you if your tow rating is sixty five hundred and you tow sixty eight hundred, and you're in an accident. Guess what, bud? You're liable. Like you could have some serious problems there. Um, insurance, like DOT, like this is a thing. Um, don't do it. Like why? I don't understand why people see tow ratings as like a minimum recommended guidance. Like, I don't understand. I don't understand that. And just because you can do something doesn't mean you should. Um, it, it's insane to me that people would do that. If the tow rating 6,500, it's 6,500. But if you've modified that Jeep at all, it's less. The, the second you put a lift and bigger tires on it, it's down. So assuming your stock, it's 6,500. Yeah. Don't go over that yeah. and watch your tongue weight. Mm -hmm. Don't be a dummy. Like now, that, it, let's, that's the easiest question you've ever asked me. <laughs> let's give him the the absolute benefit of the doubt and and say that he is being extremely cautious and thinks that the sixty five hundred is generous. Um, do you have like a an? I think everyone's got a different comfortable tow rating on like what a comfortable. Rig is. Yeah. Like, do you have like an actual comfortable? Five. Yeah. That's kind of what I was thinking. Yeah. Too. 45 to five, 45 to five. Yeah. I, I think that's fine. I like to be, and I do this on my, on my, on my heavy duty. Um, you know, I'm buying a, uh, about a fifth wheel. And one of the questions that they asked me was what kind of truck do you drive? And I said, well, that's a 2024 Chevy Silverado 2500, but it's a ZR2, which means the tow rating isn't quite what it would be if it was a, um, some other model, an LTZ or whatever. Um, I think the traditional is 18.5, and then it's like, it's right around 18, 19,000 pounds, which I don't need 18, 19,000 pounds. Um, but it's a fifth wheel, and they said, well, the pin weight on this is like, at first they thought it was like 3,100 and some odd pounds. I'm like, no, that's not right. And they're like, well, you can't buy this camper. I'm like, well, what do you mean? You're like, because your pin weight max in your on your sticker, and it's true, it was like right over 3,000 pounds, my payload, for the for what I could have on my actual pin weight. It was like 3,040 pounds. And they said, well, this one's 3140. You can't do that. Like, we can't even sell it to you. We'd, we'd be liable. I'm like, well, first of all, you're wrong. And they were. The pinway was actually like 25 and some change. But they were like very serious about that. Like, your pinway cannot exceed what your truck is able to tow. Like, we will not sell you this camper. Like, you're going to have to find a smaller camper. Uh, <clears throat> luckily, they were wrong and we were able to get a, get a hold of it. But, and I'm, and I, I am buying it. Um, but you got to, I mean, that stuff's got to be just, there's no reason to screw around with tow ratings. Like you want to kill your brakes and rear in somebody be my guest by trying to over tow. That's your big, that's going to be your biggest problem is braking. Um, plus your wheelbase, like the gladiator is not the wheelbase of an F-150 or a Chevy 2500 or a Ram third. Like that's a big thing. Track width is a thing. Um, wheelbase is a thing. The fact that your coil sprung in the rear is a thing. Like there's all these things. What you, how effectively you can cool fluid, like your oil capacity, like all of those things go into figuring out tow ratings. And I also get, I understand that people say, well, in the U S the ratings are lower and the same vehicle in Europe is higher. I don't live in Europe. I don't know what their safety standards are. I don't, de I don't know. I know what's in the U S and I know if you violate it, you can't go to the, you can't go to court and say, well, in Germany, this would be legal. Like that's not a defense in the eyes of the law in the U S DOT don't care. They don't care. So you're going to get hemmed up. So it's just not worth it. I think um, if you want to buy a vehicle to tow, buy a vehicle that tows. Um, you know, gladiators are good for small camera. I've towed uh, 2,000 pounds. It tows it like there's nothing back there. I've towed a 2,000 pound Overland trailer. It tows it awesome. The Wrangler did it. Reaper did it on 40s. It was fine. Um, uh, and that was on 30. That was a 3,500 pound capacity, which was probably closer to like 28 to 3 after I lifted it and put, you know, big tires and stuff on it. Um, the Gladiator was probably, it was 65 from the factory. Maybe, actually, I think it was six because I think the Mojaves are less. Um, and I probably reduced that by even more by lifting it and putting 40s on it at one time in 38s. Um, and I towed 4,000 with that uh, twice. And it was okay. I mean, I could, I could do it. I wouldn't have gone much more. 
again, because it was lifted and had the different shocks and all that. But I think if I'd been stock, 45 to 5 is is totally fine. I'm a big proponent of, of towing. Comfortable tow range to me is 75 to 80% of, of, of rating. Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking, too, is about 80% of, of what it's rated at. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. That's my that's my general rule of thumb. So if you're seeing this podcast, man, um, a Grand Cherokee, depending on what year Grand Cherokee, drop a link. You, didn't, you didn't mention what year, but if it's a newer Grand Cherokee on a U-Haul trailer through the Colorado mountains, I would be very careful. I wouldn't um, do it. Yeah, I'm telling you right now, I wouldn't do it. I, and it's not that I don't yeah. think it would tow it. Um, coming it's down. It's, it's what goes up must come down. So yeah, unless you're going to the down. very top of the mountain and staying there, you, you're going to fry your brakes up pretty bad. Independence uh, Pass is no joke. No. <laughs> um, I've done that with an F. I've done that with an F-250 bumper pulling 14,000 pounds. The truck did it. Um, up was fine, but down was, I mean, it did it fine, but the truck was built to do that. Um, it, it did it. And I did it with a guy who was on his F-150, uh, five Oh coyote doing it with an open trailer and pulling a 392 Wrangler. He was under his tow rating for sure, but the truck was squatted. He didn't have airbags or anything like that. It wasn't modified to tow better and he couldn't keep up. He lost me. I had to wait. I had to get down to the bottom and wait for him. Cause he was. He was he was having a little bit of not I wouldn't say struggle, but he was definitely having to mind cross you know dot his eyes and cross his t's and mind them p's and q's, uh, especially coming down from Vail Pass back down into like Idaho Springs on seventy coming back into Denver. Yeah, so, that's that's um, no joke either. That's a steep grade. It's not, uh, and it's and it's left and it's right. It's really mm-hmm. really tight turns. It's really high elevation. The road conditions on I seventy, especially coming eastbound freaking suck oh god they're horrible that's one of the the worst (laughs) oh my god it's one of the worst surfaces in the freaking all of the united states and and i'm saying that having been through you know wisconsin last year that was pretty bad Mm -hmm. that section of i-70 is is, it's worse yeah oh i agree it's worse i agree it just is so yeah it sucked it sucked it sucked hard it was pretty bad (laughs) terrible yeah well that is all i've got for the uh for the mailbag portion of this, if you've got anything to add on to this episode. I will say that was one of my favorite ones. Those were good questions. Good I like questions. surprising you on the steering stabilizer. Yeah. One. <laughs> um, we have not addressed tow capacity in this, on this show um, that I remember, um, you know, the old death wiggle, death wobble as it's a, it's a common question, but common knowledge has changed over the last couple of years. So um, happy to get that answer on, on camera and on audio. So that I can reference it back, um, or somebody will throw it back in my face and go, "Remember that time you said stabilizers don't fix death wobble?" At the time I said it, I was right. Uh, I am that would no longer be a correct statement, not with the JL now. Now that would that would, you would just be wrong to say that. So, um, yeah, outstanding questions, and I really really love that you got one from my favorite group. <laughs> <laughs> and now it's going to be a goal, like at least oh, uh, so once good. a month. I'm going to try to find. An actual, legit, <laughs> good so question much. from Gladiators Only. Uh, oh, man. With that May said, though, with you. Um, I know you're, you are you got to get out the door. You got to get the uh, – got to get I that. I do. We got more stuff to do. Oh, it's terrible. Graphics problems. So, But I'm glad this was actually like a little nice respite for me of answering some questions. Thank you, everybody out there, for letting me have the opportunity to uh, to do this because this is this is my uh, – this is my woosah. Answering some technical questions is my – can't see my ears right now, but woo-saw. it was good stuff. So thank you guys for stopping in, listening. Um, do apologize for not having a Wednesday episode once again, but we will get those going back once we are done with Mob Moab. It's a pretty big event. It's first year it's been done like this. So I'm trying to help out where I can. Got to be ready where got to be ready. Uh, we've already got some Jeeps out there. We've got some more going out tomorrow. There, it's a it's a it's a symphony of organized chaos going on right now. And and mostly North Carolina, Tennessee's got their stuff pretty much figured out and gone. That those were some builds that were already done, but um, we're getting it, we're getting it figured out. We'll get there. So thanks everybody for listening. Uh, as always, remember to like, remember to comment, and subscribe, hit the notification bell on YouTube if you are watching us there. Um, we want to be able to keep bringing this to you. We enjoy doing it, hundred percent, absolutely enjoy doing it. So with that, I am going to leave you. Take off, go do some more mob Moab things, and get prepared to get this Jeep on a transport trailer. I will leave you guys uh, for the next episode, probably not next Wednesday, but the following in the capable hands of Mr. Caleb Forbes and his um, yet to be announced co-host, but it's cool. And I will see everyone after I return from mob Moab. Peace out everyone. See you next time. You've been listening to dirt to dust. 
Presented by Outlaw Off-Road. The premier off-road centers for Jeeps, trucks, and SUVs. Sounds a little bit arrogant, doesn't it? Oh, well. We hope you've enjoyed the show. Make sure to like, rate, and review. Be sure to tell your friends about the show, too. We'll be back soon. But in the meantime, to see more and to see what Outlaw Off-Road offers, hit the website at theoutlawoffroad.com. See you next time. Don't follow us. You're not going to make it. Yeah. <laughs>